first thing you want to do when it comes to criticism, because criticism, a form of it is necessary. I mean, if you are in a work environment, you need to be able to point out what other people could be doing better. Um, but the way to go about it is to not start a full-blown criticism attack, but to have a sort of a gentle startup to it. Hey, H.A., there's, there's something I'd, I'd like to talk with you about because some, there's something that I'm you know, struggling with a little bit, easing into this entire thing. And, and studies show that conversations that start gently usually end gently as well as opposed to dropping that hydrogen bomb of, you know, you're always doing this thing and, and starting the conversation that way. And in, in that regard, it's also important to talk about the I instead of the you, because that's where the finger pointing goes, right? If I point at you and I say, hey, you, Johnny, uh, you left your sandwich on my desk again. You know, it's accusation. If I go like, hey, I am, I'm always like, I'm, I'm so organized. And if I find a sandwich lying on my table, it's like confusing and I can't like work properly because I want to eat the sandwich. Um, makes the entire thing about me and the problems that I'm having with the situation as opposed to you being the horrible person who's creating these problems for me. And look at the agency that created for Johnny. Right, Johnny can go, well, I don't want Michael to be frustrated with a sandwich on his desk, so what control do I have? Oh, I can take my sandwich. But if you go directly into you, Johnny, Johnny no longer has agency. It's just an attack, right? He now feels really vulnerable because he's being singled out. He's being called out. And I love the framing of the gentle startup. This is really important because I'm a little bit frustrated. I'm a little concerned. I'm a little confused right? Just that framing versus always and never and waiting, right? Oftentimes we feel most comfortable criticizing when we've waited for a preponderance of evidence, right? You wait till the 30th late email, the 45th time I'm late to the meeting for you to finally say, you're always this, right? Now, instead of coming to me the first time and saying, hey, it's a little frustrating for me. I have a, a tight calendar with our X Factor coaching calls and our Unstoppable members. And when you're late to meetings, I feel like I'm rushed then going into these coaching sessions, which are really important to me, right? Bringing that up and communicating that the first instance, instead of waiting to the 30th, the 40th, the 50th instance, will often get us to a resolution and again, create that team environment. Now, if we bring this into the, the romantic realm, many of us with our romantic partners uh, especially during this time, are spending more time than ever with them. So if you're getting criticized in one area and you live together, you're doing activities together, you have hobbies and passions together, well, all of a sudden, you're now going to start looking for criticism. Where am I going to get criticized next, right? It's not just the trash going out. It's not just the bed not being made. Oh, man, now I'm going to get in trouble for the laundry or, you know, the hamper piling up. So it's important to realize that that gentle start creates space and agency for the other person to feel like they're participating in the solution versus they're the problem. And in regards to um, them being part of the solution, I find it also very useful in turning uh, criticism into uh, constructive feedback by asking what they think about it. Mm -hmm. 